Coming up on today's Locked On Big Ten, Isaiah Hull is in to talk about next week's bid matchup against Ohio State. Yeah, we're already talking about it. And also, we'll get into every game this week here on Locked On Big Ten. <laughs> You are Locked On Big Ten, your daily podcast on the Big Ten Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Big Ten, everything you need to know about the conference every weekday, Monday through Friday. I'm Nate Dickinson, your host. We're joined on Thursdays by our Locked On Wolverines host, Isaiah Holin, he's with Wolverines Wire 2 covering the team and knows everything you need to know about Michigan. We'll start here with a little bit of a look ahead for the Wolverines. We're going to talk about Michigan's matchup with Maryland this weekend, too, in the moment, Isaiah. But first off, I want to talk a little bit about how it was a little tough for me to find something to open the show with today. I have thought college football playoff we could talk, but I don't want to have the conversation about how it's just going to end up be whoever wins the Big Ten again. We could talk about the matchup between Michigan State and Ohio State, but uh, obviously you just want Ohio State to win that one, which is a bit of an odd situation for Michigan fans. But again, that's kind of an obvious conversation to have. So I just kind of want to look forward to next week a little bit. Say Ohio State wins this. And this is the big matchup, of course, everyone's been waiting for Michigan-Ohio State next weekend. Buckeyes are on a roll right now. They're favored by what? It's two or three touchdowns in between against Michigan State this weekend even. It'll probably be similar against Michigan, I'm guessing. Where are you at with how anybody, let alone Michigan, can stop this Buckeyes team? Well, it, the thing is with Ohio State is we, we're still not 100% sure what it is and, and to some degree. Like we do know, obviously, that it has generally a prolific offense, but we've seen when it's go, gone up, up against most good defenses not all they really surprised i think against purdue with the way that they played they they haven't been nearly as prolific so i'm curious to see i don't think that that's going to be an issue per se against michigan state for ohio state for instance because it has the worst pass defense in the country like going strength against absolute weakness not great but ohio state has had some similar issues to michigan in that it sometimes has struggled to, to score touchdowns in the red zone. So if Michigan state does its normal bend, don't break. And I know I'm kind of veering off course here, but mm -hmm. if Michigan state does its normal bend, don't break type defense, then certainly they could stay in it. And the reason why I mentioned that is I think the worst case for uh, worst case scenario for Michigan is Ohio state loses this game, not just because it puts Michigan state in the driver's seat, but Every time we've seen Ohio State struggle or even lose the week before the game, it's tended to not go well for Michigan because they come in refocused, pissed off, the types of things that you don't want. What, what Michigan certainly has to want going into this game is that Ohio State just throttles Michigan State so that they kind of go in with a supreme sense of confidence. Michigan's been working on Ohio State all year long, which is not customary anymore it hadn't been for a very long time they've had this renewed focus i'm not sure what that looks like i'm not sure how, how much of that is just hey do extra reps how much of it is actually putting in plays on a weekly basis that they feel like could beat ohio state uh it, it's going to be an interesting game because especially when whenever these two teams have met up as top 10 opponents in recent memory it's been the game's been in Columbus, not in Ann Arbor. So this is the first time that the, the game, the big game is going to be in Ann Arbor. Uh, I'm not saying that I think Michigan is going to win the game. I've been pretty adamant on lockdown Wolverines on Wolverines player for years <laughs> that Michigan is not going to win this game against Ohio state, but I think it might have a better chance than some might think. And I think that the game might go better than many might think. I think the, the addition of Mike McDonald is the defensive coordinator, uh, for instance, yesterday uh, we talked to linebackers coach George Hilo, and he was asked about uh, how, how do you, you know, Michigan has really stopped those shallow crossing routes. What's what's been the deal there? And he explained his philosophy, but that's kind of how Ohio State has really killed Michigan in recent years is that obviously the running game in 2019 as well with J.K. Dobbins uh, was a big part of it. Uh, I think this Michigan team is not necessarily as I, I, I'm reticent to use the word high flying because I don't think that 
2018 or 19 were necessarily high flying type teams, but this team might be a little bit more complete in the sense of I, I it, it, it has had moments where it's broken. We saw that against Michigan state with Kenneth Walker, but I would not be surprised if they made it a game. It seems like they have a lot of things that they can do that we haven't necessarily seen, or we've seen very, just very little of. So with that in mind, I mean, that's all on the Michigan side. I mean, Ohio state, uh, it, it's had stretches where it's looked mortal and then they come out against Purdue and look great. And I, I would imagine again, it's a bad matchup for Michigan state's off uh, defense versus the Ohio state offense. I, I can't see that going really well uh, for Michigan state. So I, I think that they'll continue to look really, really good. And then suddenly the game will end up being a dog fight kind of like Penn state or some of those or Nebraska, some of those other teams that have taken Ohio state to the wire. Well, it's going to be a whole lot of fun no matter what happens this weekend between Michigan State, Ohio State. A whole lot of intrigue in that matchup. As you mentioned, it's not really expected for Michigan to win it, but honestly, losing to Ohio State is okay and kind of acceptable right now for just about every team except for one, and that's the Michigan Wolverines, of course. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll see what ends up happening next weekend in Ann Arbor. We'll talk more about that game, of course, a ton next week here on Locked On Big Ten, but of course, we got a weekend here coming up that we've got to get to first. Big Ten has, I think, everybody in action again. Is it seven yeah. full games? Yes, it is. All 14 teams back in action again this weekend. We'll go over the most important matchups that you need to know about here on Locked On Big Ten with Isaiah in just a minute. If you're a daily fantasy sports player, you've got to try out prize picks. Now, if you're a college sports fan, like, of course, if you're listening to Locked On Big Ten, you probably are, prize picks can help you out in a way that not a lot of other sites can because they give you the chance to play your daily fantasy with some of your college players that you love in ways that other sites just don't let you. They've got more options for college players than anything else. You go to prize picks, you fill out a list of players and pick different overs or unders on things like yards or touchdowns. And then if all of your picks hit, you could end up winning a whole lot of money. Head on over to prizepicks.com. Again, this is daily fantasy, the way you want to play it with more options, as many options as you can get. Head on over there now, and of course, be sure to let them know Locked On sent you. Use your promo code Locked On for a 100% welcome bonus, up to $100 when you sign up. Back in here on Locked On Big Ten, everything you need to know about the Big Ten Conference every day of the week, Monday through Friday. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. Be sure to make your second listen Locked On Wolverines, where Isaiah Hole, our Thursday co-host here, is on to break down everything going on with Michigan. Right now, we got to talk about two big rivals who are facing off on Saturday, Isaiah, Michigan State and Ohio State in Columbus. Ohio State still, of course, undefeated in the conference. The offense looking better than ever, as you mentioned, beating up on a Purdue defense that we had started to think was pretty good after some of the performances it had put up. Now facing off against Michigan State, and we've already gotten a little bit into this. Ohio State passes the ball better than anybody in the country. Michigan State defends it worse than anybody in the country. That does not spell for a good chance for Michigan State. It wouldn't have had a good chance even if things had been even on that particular matchup. Ohio State's just a better team all around. We know that. But the Spartans ha have explosiveness to maybe keep up for a while. I, I don't think either of us think it's going to be enough to make things close, now that it's Vegas. Right. And Ohio State certainly has its defense defensive deficiencies. Their pass defense is also not great. That said, I mean, Michigan State's passing offense doesn't come anywhere close to what Ohio State's does. So that's where you start to have an issue. Uh, so... And Ohio State's been pretty good at stopping the run as well as this technically is the best rush defense that uh, that they'll have seen that Michigan State will have seen. That's kind of a different than what we saw earlier in the year. So it makes you wonder kind of like how Michigan at that point was the best rush defense that Michigan State had ever seen. How different is it when Ohio State has to encounter Kenneth Walker because you, you you whiff on a tackle, it's done. That's it's really that quick. You know, it happens without really much thought. So, I, I think that there there will be some body blows at least early. But I, again, the explosiveness that Ohio State has, unless Michigan State can somehow figure out how to shore up its pass defense in a real, real big hurry, it, it just doesn't seem like it's very likely. But just it's 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 one of those games where. It, it, normally you'd look at the the number th uh, four team versus the number seven team and you'd say that's going to be a really good game 
It's just that when you when you have games where there is such a matchup discrepancy, that there's reasons, for instance, why Purdue was able to take down teams like Michigan State, why Purdue was able to take down Iowa, is because they are built to be able to to beat those types of teams. It doesn't really matter how good or not they are overall. It's just that they have those strengths where those other teams have glaring weaknesses and kind of vice versa. It is unfortunately for Michigan State, that type of situation where Ohio State just it's all of its strengths are right where Michigan State's weaknesses are. This very well could get out of hand early. Uh, But like I said, if Michigan State can find a way to slow them down in the red zone, keep things in front of them enough so that there aren't these explosive touchdowns that end up uh, making the game go sideways really quickly, then certainly can become a game kind of like basically this a similar game plan to what it was against Michigan in the sense of Michigan had the game under control for about three quarters against Michigan State. And because Michigan wasn't able to score touchdowns was settling for field goals, suddenly Michigan State's uh, right back in it. That would be the, the path to victory for MSU is all right, if you're going to let up some explosive plays, just keep them out of the end zone, make them, make them kick field goals. And if you can do that, then you've got yourself a shot. Certainly easier said than done with this Ohio state team though, but I agree. It's a team, as you mentioned, four against seven, you want to be able to talk about this a whole lot more on this show, especially, but and especially with the fact that honestly, as we get to the rest of the big 10 slate this weekend does not seem all that exciting. So it's, the biggest game in college football this weekend, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if it ends up getting out of hand early and a whole lot of people don't end up even watching all of it. I mean, it's that noon game on ABC. There's going to be a whole lot of other college football to watch. I mean, this game could easily not end up being top rated by the end of the weekend. I don't know what else there is around the slate on the country, but this is just, I feel like it's again, one that could easily be decided well before the fourth quarter even starts just with the way Ohio state plays. I mean, we got to give the credit to Michigan State, right? I mean, beat Michigan it has itself plenty of reasons to believe it, it can keep up with an Ohio State, maybe with a Kenneth Walker down there on the ground game. But as we mentioned, the passing game's not there to keep up with the Buckeyes. The passing defense isn't there to stop the Buckeyes. So uh, assuming Ohio State scores a minimum of like 30, 35 points, which I think you'd be like thrilled with if you could hold Ohio State to 30 if you're Michigan State. I don't know if the offense is there to match it. We talked about this before. It's that combination of offense and defense that Ohio State has that they're both so good that even if one does really poorly, you still got to do really good to beat them. It's just a tough team to be able to take down unless they're really off their game. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, moving on to the rest of the slate, as I mentioned, there's nothing really all that exciting to talk about. I mean, there's obviously every team that matters in action. Iowa's hosting Illinois. Minnesota's on the road at Indiana, a team that hasn't won the Big Ten yet. Uh, Purdue, which now has three Big Ten losses, so I guess doesn't never hasn't mattered for a while. But the upset makers aren't playing anyone they can upset. They're on the road at Northwestern. Penn State's at home against Rutgers. Uh, it can go on. Michigan's on the road at Maryland. That might be the, uh, easily, actually, the second best matchup out there on the weekend. But where are you at with the, this slate of games? Let's start with Michigan-Maryland. Uh, Wolverines, I think, should easily win this one. But Maryland has an offense that can score points. Uh, how have you kind of approached this matchup this Saturday, leading into, of course, a big one next weekend that you can't look ahead to? Well, it's kind of a, the dress rehearsal for Ohio State uh, mm-hmm. for Michigan in that Maryland is a prolific passing offense. Michigan hasn't really faced one that's this good going into uh, going into this game as of yet. Comes in with the number eight pass defense, so uh, it'll be interesting to see how it goes as far as that. Uh, again, Maryland hasn't exactly done anything against a defense worth the salt. Uh, has looked terrible in Big Ten play. You you can probably chalk a lot of that up to injuries, which is a very typical Maryland thing, unfortunately, since just never seems like the Terps can stay healthy for any stretch and hasn't since they've joined the big 10. But uh, nonetheless, I I, I think that this is that that's the the thing is how is this defense going to do against that offense? If the defense ends up being pretty good, that uh, for Michigan, that, that kind of gives you an idea of maybe just maybe, uh, against Ohio State that it will be also pretty good because they've got athletes at, at Maryland. I, I think that the athletes at Ohio State are better, of course. I think they're better across the board, except for 
I'd be curious to see what Talia Tagovailo would look like in Ohio State's offense. I think it would look relatively similar to <laughs> CJ Stroud. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, and then on the other side of the ball, you've got a defense that plays man coverage. Uh, that Michigan hasn't really seen a lot of that as well. And so even though, again, Maryland's defense is not good, their offense certainly is what carries them. They're, they're allergic to defense. Still, I mean, just the fact that it's a different look than what Michigan's used to seeing, it, that, that kind of adds to the dress rehearsal because Ohio State, they're going to have man coverage. If Michigan finds ways to exploit man coverage over and over again, you can kind of expect whatever works against Maryland to be a part of the game plan of what works against Ohio State. So um, certainly, again, simple caveats we we haven't seen michigan play a pass defense of this caliber yet so if the the pass defense suddenly just falters which that's been the better generally the better part of the the two halves uh pass versus run uh if if the pass defense ends up being not so good uh especially because maryland doesn't really run the ball nearly as well as it passes then michigan could be in for a game it's a road game but i i don't it, you know, College Park isn't exactly a hostile environment. No offense to our friends over there. Uh, I enjoy going there. That's why I'm going today. <laughs> That's why instead of Friday, I'm getting <laughs> getting to town a day early. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, I, I think that, again, yeah, Michigan should win this one relatively easily. It should be relatively easy compared to what we just saw last week against Penn State. Uh, that doesn't mean that it won't have some moments of friction, but I would imagine if, if if anything, second half Michigan should be able to overtake Maryland in this one. This is it, the putt to win the tournament. If you sink it, the championship is yours. But on your backswing, your hat falls over your eyes. This could be how you're running your business. Poor visibility because you're still relying on spreadsheets and outdated finance software. To see the full picture, you need to upgrade to NetSuite by Oracle. 93% of surveyed businesses increase their visibility and control after upgrading to NetSuite. Over 70, or I'm sorry, 27,000 businesses already use NetSuite. And right now, through the end of the year, NetSuite is offering a one-of-a-kind financing program to those ready to upgrade at NetSuite.com slash NCAA. Head to netsuite.com slash locked on NCAA for a special end of year financing on the number one financial system for growing businesses. Netsuite.com slash NCAA. Yeah, it's it's just one of many games like that. Again, as we mentioned across the slate, that it's like, yeah, maybe something could happen. Like maybe Nebraska can keep up with Wisconsin at home in Madison, but it's much more likely that Wisconsin keeps playing like an insanely really good offensive football team, which is something we can talk about too here in a second against those corn huskers. Let's get to that right now. Actually, Wisconsin has been really good. The offense has had a complete turnaround. Graham Mertz has looked better. This team's putting up points in a way that it just hadn't done at the early part of the season in a way that I thought was going to keep it from really making any sort of noise the entire way. But there's been some sort of change with this Badgers team. And now, if you ask me, they're in that driver's seat in the Big Ten West. They look like the best team out there. Yeah, and if, if I, I would put that on the offensive line for really finally coalescing because it didn't – It, I, I felt like it, it was not what you expect from Wisconsin early. Uh, and then it really got exposed by Michigan's defensive front, which, I mean – pretty much every offensive line they've faced has. So I think that that caused them to look inward and kind of try to figure out what they, what they needed to do. And I think that that's where they, they went back to, you know, what you expect from Wisconsin in the sense of we're going to have a dedication at running the football. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, what, uh, what happens. That's what we're going to do. And I think having that stretch of games in which Graham Mertz was only throwing what nine, 10 times a game, a couple of those games. And the fact that Braylon Allen has really stepped up, I think that that that's what helped them reforge their identity. And then they were able to start working Graham Mertz passing it a little bit, have that uptick up a little bit more once they kind of had figured out, okay, this is how we need to play this. You know, we need to rely on the run game. We need to have our bruisers up front, continue to do what they're doing. And, uh, and if we run the ball, then we can, we can have those uh, passing counters. And I think that that's, played a, a big part for Wisconsin. You can expect them to go and continuously do that same thing over and over again. I'm just curious to see what happens this week, because I mean, aside from the Ohio state game, you know, again, Nebraska's lost every game by one score. And even with that Ohio state game, the most lopsided loss of the year, that's a game that it's a, that oh, Nebraska honestly should have won more than any of the ones that lost. So 
it's uh it's interesting to to see that it's like Nebraska's going to be in every game. I think they'll be in this one as well. So it'll be interesting to see what uh what uh, Adrian Martinez is able to do against this Wisconsin defense, which is easily the toughest in the conference, in my opinion. And uh, I, I think it stands right there with Georgia, right? It's statistically in the same kind of spot with Georgia. I think the thing that maybe gives you a little bit of concern if you're Wisconsin is that Northwestern managed to get over hundred yards rushing. Uh, that's not something that you want to see, especially going into a, a game with a, an offense that tends to do really well, except for it makes a couple big mistakes. Now, that's also the thing, you know, of course, against Wisconsin, they're probably going to make a couple big mistakes. It's just the question of timing. You get them out of the way early, then you probably have a shot. But if you do like Nebraska tends to do in most of these games that have those mistakes happen late, it gives you no, it gives you no chance to essentially win the game. Right. Yeah, it, it'll be something maybe Wisconsin, that team. It seems like there's been somebody every week that may be on that upset alert because you're right. Nebraska's we've talked about plenty of times on the show too they've lost a lot but it's been by pretty narrow margins throughout that team has been able to play with just about everyone that it's come up against uh, across the rest of the big 10 schedule though i mean purdue at northwestern rutgers against penn state iowa hosting illinois and indiana against minnesota i don't see much more for us to talk about all that much the rest of the way i mean again if an upset happens it can shift the way that everything's looked at going into that last week but this appears to be kind of i mean if you ask me just a, a little bit of a warm-up cool down week before getting into that final big 10 week where we're going to have a hu whole bunch of huge matchups at least like from the, the scheduling standpoint of things nobody knows of course how things are going to look at the start of the season but you look at these matchups it, it's not like any of these are really set up to be huge Right. And I'm, I'm, I am kind of curious about Penn State Rutgers. Let's see how Penn State bounces back after, uh, you know, considering that they had lost three, they won one, then they lose again. How, how much do they bounce back? This is this Rutgers team, probably a little bit more confident after getting back in the winning column as well. Uh, it's it's We've seen that it's not necessarily always a doormat. It, it has been at times this year and other times it hasn't been. So Penn State, you know, it's in order to to go – you know, to, to get to potentially being eight and four, which is respectable, you got to beat Rutgers. If you don't, you're probably start staring down the barrel of a six and six season, which is just mm -hmm. not what you want. Yeah, it's going to be fun to watch, of course, just to see on Saturday who shows up and who doesn't, because as we've seen, that pretty much determines who can win the game in the Big Ten more so than the talent actually on the field. So of course, what happens on that Saturday? And we'll have more to talk about on tomorrow's show, of course. And then next week, we'll recap everything that we previewed here today with Isaiah here on Locked On Big Ten. Isaiah, thanks for joining us as you do every single Thursday. Of course, you can read his stuff on Wolverine's Wire. You can see it too, I guess. I, you read it though. And to, Isaiah, remind us everything else that you're up to and where people can find you. Uh, Locked on Wolverines. We got it on YouTube as well as the uh, you know, anywhere you get your podcasts. Although beware lately, I've been so overwhelmed that sometimes I forget to upload it to one or the other. So <laughs> look for both if you can't find it one day, because we're in that point of the season where I don't have my head screwed on straight. We're playing hard to get over at Locked on Wolverines, but they're there somewhere. I promise. As always, Monday through Friday, make Locked On Big Ten your first listen. And then once you're done, of course, head on over to Locked On Wolverines. And be sure to follow, subscribe, whatever it is on wherever it is that you're listening. Isaiah Hole with us as always on a Thursday. Thanks again for talking to us, Isaiah. This has been Locked On Big Ten.